Um, we are still in the grade seven science unit called heat and temperature. And this section, uh, we're going to talk about the particle model of matter, um, which is a concept or theory or model <laughs> that you're going to hear about uh, well into high school as well. Okay. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to go through the particle model of matter and just kind of explain the different parts to it. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through the diagram that you're looking at right beside all this written text. And, um, and then I'm going to go over some examples as well of how we use the particle model to describe what particles are doing. Okay. Um, so yeah, so let's check, check it out. So particle model of matter. Right now, there's four points that uh, you need to be familiar with at this point of the game. And uh, let, me, let me highlight these. Um, I'm going to use different colors here just to make it a little more interesting. Um, okay, so first of all, all matter, and we kind of, uh, well, maybe I didn't emphasize this before. All matter, and matter is, can be in a, as a solid, liquid, or gas. So all matter is made up of extremely tiny particles. That's the first thing. It's made up of particles. Okay? Some people call them molecules. Some people call them atoms. Some people call them whatever. It doesn't matter. It, at, again, at this point of the game, we'll just call them particles. It doesn't really matter what you refer to them as. Um, okay, so particles. I'm going to use a P for particles. Okay, now number two, these particles of matter, and it doesn't matter what state uh, we're in and how hot, hot or cold they are, these tiny particles are always moving. They're always moving. Okay? They're always Sorry, my speaker or my uh, microphone just popped up. Um, these particles are always moving. Um, even in ice, you might think, well, ice is so dang cold. You go trying to find the coldest spot on the earth, right? And that chunk of ice or frozen, whatever it is that you're looking at, those particles still have some heat and they're still moving, even if they're frozen. Okay. However, when you add heat to them, uh, to any kind of matter, it makes the particles move around faster. Okay, And we've kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, point number three, particles have space between them. So even if we're talking about, um, even if we're talking about the, the most dense solid, so let's pick iron, right, that they use in construction. Even, even iron, there are spaces between those particles. Now, those spaces in iron, the spaces between the particles may be very, very small, but they're still there, okay? So they have space between their particles, so an S. And this kind of goes along with this. That they're all obviously very uh, connected. Um, there are attractive forces between the particles, okay? So there are attractive forces between the particles. And that's why, you know, if you're, you're in a wading pool and you try to run through the pool, it's hard to get through there, right? Because water, just using that as an example, water holds on to other water, right? Those particles are really attracted to one another. Now, in a, if you're to run through a pool that's empty, that's a little easier um, because it's filled with a gas and the, the gas that we breathe, uh, those particles are not very strongly attached to one another. If you put a different material in the pool, like, oh, I don't even know put what we put. Uh, let's put jello in there because that's pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Anyways, we try to run through the jello, and that's even harder than running through water, I would imagine. Never done it. Love to. Um, but that is because the attraction between those particles is stronger. Okay? So I want you to look at the, my, the letters that I've put here, A, S, M, and P. And when I teach kids, this is, uh, I rearrange those letters to spell spam. Okay? And if we were in class, uh, we always cook up some spam and, and enjoy some, uh, a lovely uh, snack of spam. That's beautiful. Okay, but that's, that acronym will help us remember uh, the different points in the particle model of matter. So I want you to look at this diagram now. So it goes from particles are very tight together, 
And this represents, this right here, the little uh, heat there, that represents uh, heating up this container with whatever particles are in there. So we continue to heat, continue to heat, continue to heat. And at the bottom picture, the particles are very far apart. Okay. So if we look at the beginning, this represents a solid. Okay. And in that solid, the particles are very close together. So there's not very much space between the particles. There is some, but not very much. Okay. You can kind of see some of the movement signs around those particles. That shows that, yes, even though they're solid, they still are moving. Not very much, but they are moving. Okay. And then there's these black little uh, um, rods that represent the attraction between molecules or particles. Okay. It shows that these particles are stuck together. They're attracted to one another. Okay. Now, as you add heat, check out what happens. As you add heat, the particles move around more. You can notice that there's a little bit more space between the particles. Okay? But the attraction seems to be still intact. Okay? Uh, again, you heat it up even more. Check it out. They're moving more. They're farther apart. And now look at some of the attractions between the particles are so weak that we don't even have a black rod representing it. There's still an attraction there, but it's pretty weak. Okay? Now, well, you keep heating it up, and now look at particles are very much farther apart. We're right on this one, by the way. We're are very much farther apart. The attraction is not very visible. That represents a very weak attraction. And those particles are starting to move around quite a bit. And you can see as we move along here, this would be a, a liquid, right? This would represent our liquid. Um, and as we continue to add heat to that, you can see that the particles are spreading farther apart. They're moving more to the point where right in here, this represents our gas, right? They are very far apart. They're moving rapidly, and there's very little attraction. Okay? In fact, that attraction probably only exists um, or it's measurable or whatever when those particles are moving around and they kind of get close to one another. But they're moving so fast and have so much energy that they don't have the capacity to, to join up again. Okay. So we're going to go over that. I want to show you, I want to throw a little example your way. So what if we have this little ice cube, right? And this ice cube has melted because we've added in a little bit of heat, right? So using that acronym, SPAM, right? I want you to tell me what is happening to the particles that make up this ice when it's heated and becomes water. What's happening here? What's happening to those particles? Okay, now while you're doing that, you're going to use the word particles. The particles are, and you're going to tell me some things. You're going to tell me three things. You're going to tell me about the space, the attraction, and the movement. So let's do that. So as we heat up ice to become water, we're adding heat energy. What happens to the amount of space between the particles? That's right. The amount of space between the particles gets bigger, gets larger. And you can describe that in, in other ways too. You could say there's more space, the space is bigger, whichever. Okay. What about the attraction between particles? What can you tell me about the attraction between those particles when you go from ice to water, when you heat it up? What happens? Right, the attraction gets weaker. Okay, and the last bit is the, the movement, okay? The movement of the particles in ice as we heat it up to become water. What happens to the amount of movement? That's right, there, be, there is more movement. Okay, and that's how you answer these questions, right? This isn't a situation where you are gaining heat. Right? If we were to do an example where we're going, <laughs> get rid of the flame, 
and uh, we were going the other way. If we're going from water to ice, right? The uh, space between the particles would get smaller, right? The attraction would get stronger, and there would be less movement. Okay, that's in a situation where the amount of heat is decreasing. Okay, and that should do it for a particle model of matter.